it's a philosophy that can be transferred to all parts of your life. And if you, and you have to listen to the words and then you have to allow yourself to feel it. Running with your teammates at practices, getting to know them in and out, it's, it's really fun. And when you're competing and having fun, it kind of leads to personal bests. The fun comes from the satisfaction you get from the achievement that you've made. Run for fun and personal best means family. I think it means camaraderie. I think run for fun and personal best means I genuinely care how you do. I think run for fun and personal best means that I genuinely want to see you do well. I mean, the fun part's fairly self-explanatory, sort of. But the personal best part, if you take that seriously, that's a pretty high standard. I mean, like nobody knows how good they are. We are the gold standard, especially when it comes to Division Three cross country and track and field. People always want to beat us. I've had plenty of friends who go to other Division Three schools and they're like, oh, we hate North Central, blah, 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 stuff like that. And it was never because of the people that we were, it was just because of the amount of success that we've been having. And it's like, oh man, like you guys are so successful all the time. How do you guys keep doing it? Everyone knows about the, the run for fun and, and personal best and how carious. And everybody knows this, the, the North Central program, the North Central model. Ah, it's a dominant force. It's it's remarkable, you know, to always be at the national championships, to always be earning a trophy. It's really almost incomprehensible what they've been able to accomplish and the level of success that they've had year in and year out. When you see North Central College and you see Al at a meet, is it's a team. It's a team that works together. One, two, three. Yeah. You can tell they really value each other and depend on each other and do better because of that. And it, you know, it, it just raises the level of their performance by working together and supporting each other like that. In cross country season, before our, our conference meet a week before, we do a, two, a team two mile time trial just on the track. And that's kind of where we are um, given our striped, our famous striped jerseys. and. Uh, we're given that striped jersey by a guest alumni who comes to speak to us, so that, that really honors, it's a huge tradition and kind of uh, really puts into perspective how much those alumnus have paved the way for the team now. In, in a race, everybody needs to go out at a certain pace, and, and one of the things that we tended to do in the early 80s was get out the way you need to get out, but by a certain point, typically around a mile, mile and a quarter, be looking for the stripes. The stripes were more than just a jersey, you know, a uniform. It was, it was tactical for us, and now it represents the history of so many people. All of the Division three athletes that are out there, whether it be any sport, they're doing it because of their passion and their love for the sport. Yeah. Al Carius would kind of say it's the last bastion of amateurism. But I think what is still so fantastic about Division three is the perspective overall that you're still gonna be a student first and, and you're gonna get a lot of different educational opportunities where that's gonna be your priority while you're there. The very best athletic programs, the very best teaching programs, the very best corporate programs all share the kind of idea that this is the way we do it. This is the way that we want you to do it. This is the way that it works best. If we all are pulling in the same direction you know, we're going to get there. And I think that's what Al has done, certainly with his teams, for a long time. They are the team, he is the coach, and Al is the, the man. I never heard of North Central College. I was going to get my PhD and become a professor in physical education. That's why I know the science very, very well. That was my approach. I wasn't gonna be a coach. I was at my dad's Dairy Queen and a you know, summer helping him out and we got a phone call from Bob Wright who was the track coach at University of Illinois who I also served as a graduate assistant you know, coach for him working with the distance runners while I was there and Bob Wright called and said hey the school North Central College called and they're looking for a track coach and would you be interested but I never ever ever planned on staying here that long. Al had a swagger back then Got the blonde hair, the blue eyes, the white toothy smile, and anywhere around campus you'd see him cruising on a nice weather day uh, in a cherry red late 70s Corvette with 
black interior, top down, spoke chrome wheels, and a license plate that said Carius. In the late 60s, early 70s, North Central College was a ragtag group. When I first came to North Central College, we had six cross country runners. Al is so infectious that they just enjoyed it and he didn't care what they were. As long as they wanted to run, that's all he cared about. And that's where he developed his slogan, run for fun and personal best. To know Al, you have to know who Ted Hayden was. Uh, if it weren't for Ted Hayden, Al would not be the Al Karras he is today. He was the University of Chicago Track Club. He was my mentor when, when I uh, ran in postgraduate you know, school. And his focus was what can the sport do to help the athlete become better? What can the athlete get from the sport that's going to be a benefit to them? Ted founded that program to be a non-discriminatory, post-collegiate developmental program for athletes. Ted was a run for fun guy, not on the basis of race, gender, or ability as an athlete were you going to be discriminated against there. Everybody was welcome. He had average Joe athletes who uh, each year were trying to improve on their times and their performances, all the way to coaching multiple Olympians. Al took that philosophy from his years in the early 60s of running for Ted after he finished up at University of Illinois. He took the run for fun and, and I think added the personal best. You know, a coach who wants his athletes to be good people has transcended the idea of just athletes, of, of athletics as a, way of, as a way of life. You know, athletics as a stepping stone to being a better person. The Division Three coach who comes with that philosophy of improving a person while improving an athlete, you know, has the best of it. And any athlete lucky enough to have that coach profits from it for a lifetime. 1975 was a very, very special year for me. We had a group of individuals that had no individual accolades, no individual credentials, but somehow when you put them together, there was that synergistic effect where they blended together and became a great team. And they had that characteristic of greatness. We named or I coined the no names. I loved that. So understanding who the no names were, I mean, they were uh, in, in 75 and 76, those were the first two teams that Al coached that won the Division III National Championship. And they were affectionately referred to and still are as the no name bunch. Starting in 1975, you know, the no names winning a national title when nobody knew who they were or had ever heard of them, it helped to start snowballing. And then you get better athletes looking at your program. Success breeds success. And that started the pathway for the rest of us to uh, try to do the same. He called a handful of us, I think there were four of us, into his office. And he proceeds to tell us that Northwestern has called and made the offer, and he's strongly considering taking it. Uh, Northwestern wanted to de-emphasize track. They wanted all their scholarships to go to distance running and cross country. Obviously, that's why, you know, Al was touted as, you know, the next coach possibly with his, you know, what he's accomplished in cross country, not only as an athlete in the Big Ten, but what he did at Little North Central College with no athletic scholarships. I don't know how it would have changed history. Obviously, a tremendous amount of history here would have been changed. I think he realized, you know, the main motivator to go there, as he said, in part, was to develop a national caliber track and field team. And he realized, I can do that here. And that's when Frank entered the scene, Frank Ramoroso. We struck up a relationship, and, and when he told me he was turning the job down around Christmas time, he said, why don't you come here and coach at North Central? We'll pay you, I think I got $900, to be an assistant uh, track coach at North Central College. And hired Frank Gramarosa, which was the greatest hire of my life. The odd couple that fit. Grammy was the sprints coach, but he was a steeplechaser. He's this tall, <laughs> and, and we would always joke. It's like, okay, Grammy, are you running under the steeple? Are you going over? But how they, how much they fed off of each other, that 
that positive energy and, and always being on the same page in the direction of the program um, and, and what's best for the program and how they were like best friends. Grammy kind of handled all of the, the logistical stuff and, and Al was like, the, I'm seeing hanging out, how you doing and, and things like that. And they, they mix together perfectly. Oh, they're married. They, they are one mind. They are the perfect match because you got the visionary and you got the person that, it, that can execute his, his vision. Really feel very, very proud of our track and cross country staff, coaching staff. I think it's really the finest in the United States because of the number of people, the quality of people, and our philosophy, you know, together to, uh, to, to create the environment, the culture that, that we have here. So many coaches are hired for what they can do from a technique standpoint or from, you know, that, you know, what they might have from a history standpoint of wins and losses only. But this philosophy has never been based in wins and losses, ever. It's not about, we need you to win. No, we need you to become a good person, a good teammate, a good brother, a good friend, success in life. I was at Monmouth College and North Central, my sophomore year at Monmouth, North Central was hosting the outdoor NCAA championships. I didn't know anything about North Central campus, just fell in love. I'm like, wow, this place is only 35 minutes away from Chicago and, and the atmosphere. When I first met Al, the energy is the first thing that comes across. And the, all of his questions were about me as a person nothing about performances or this is what we think you can do or this is what your goal should is like just literally trying to find out about me as a person which has kind of outlined our relationship ever since at the time al's office was still in Werner, um and um you know it, it took five minutes with him he didn't care um you know what my pr was he just said i you know we want you here and we just have to decide whether or not north central is right for you and and that was the odd part of that because uh, North Central didn't offer what I was looking for. I was looking to be a landscape architect <laughs> and, um, and uh, North Central didn't have that. And, and Al pointed that out. But by that time, I'd already changed my mind about what I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> and it, was, it took five minutes. I mean, it was, it was simply the way you know, that, he made, you know, that he made me feel. It was the first time that I felt like I was at home. Never really experienced Al until 1987 when I moved back here. My first practice coming down to work out on the track and Al was in his office with maybe like normal, like 10 other North Central College runners before practice, just talking. And at one point, Al had said to the guys, Jim Spivey's coming down today. And at, at that point, I'd already been an Olympian in 1984 and finished fifth. Wendell McRaven looked him sitting in the chair like I was with his back to the wall. And the door where he entered was right here. And Wendell said, Jim Spivey's not coming to North Central College to train. And Al said, yeah, he's going to be. He's going to be here, and uh, sure enough, I walked the door like 10 seconds later, and I, I had no clue. And of course, everybody just pointed at Wendell and started laughing, and Wendell's face got completely red. And um, of course, Al let me in on the joke later. Our Central is the school we love. There we sing this great hey, hey! from the east and from the west. Here, our voices raise. Hey, hey! The Central hip. The morning run typically gets people in a good good habit of going to bed at a decent hour, getting up in the morning, um, and, and maintaining that running lifestyle. Part of it is is a shake out uh, of just shaking shaking yourself out and just get yourself going for the day. Um, also gaining mileage, uh, but also a time where it's team time. You come up to the line for an interval that fall. You're running four repeat miles, it's 80 degrees. You've already run a tempo run. You're a little tired, but okay. You're on the line, and Al says, "All set." and everybody in your group yells at the same time, you bet, and off you go. And I would tell you that the first 20, 30 steps, I'm running this high off the ground. I wasn't even touching my feet. It was like, this is awesome. You just yell at you bet, and everybody yells at the same time, and you start this interval. All set, you bet. You get a whole bunch of people who are there because they want to be there, and because they're doing something they really, really want to be doing, you tend to do it more, and you tend to do it better. And us sprinters, we would go and do Blackwell Hill, with the, the cross country team uh, in the fall. Nobody told us to, we didn't have to do it, but having a sprint group out there with the, the distance group doing Blackwell Hill. And as each group would finish, they would line the hill and cheer for the, the, the remaining group that still has to run. None of this was ever mandatory. 
I don't think I ever heard him say once, like, I think you should do 100 miles a week. It just sort of happened because, you know, and I didn't go from like the 70 I was doing in high school to 100 overnight. It took a little while. But that's just sort of what happens when you run for fun and personal best. Al's job and the coaching staff's role, and as I got to be part of that, was you, you got to keep it in play. You keep, you help make sure the culture, you, you ensure that, you know, the individuals are protected, they're doing the right things and, and move along. And obviously the students have to self-drive a lot of things too. And I think that's, that's what, again, is the intri intriguing part of you. A lot of self-driven, purpose-driven type of individuals and they wanted to win. And I think that's really important to understand that the winning was there, but at the same time, Al was able to show the caring side too. Like, we're not going to chew you up, spit you out. We, if you want to be part of the program, you're going to be part of the program and we're going to be here for you. So I, I, I think that's, again, part of the run for fun and the personal best piece is really, <laughs> it's pretty remarkable. I, I still, like I said, I'm still, like after how many years, you still kind of wonder, like, how the heck did we get to this point? This, this is really, really just wild. It starts with each individual. Um, you know, we're all different. You know, you have God-given gifts and it's great to have people different from one another. And that's part of the pillars of success that Al has taught all of us is, you know, it starts with the individual talents that God has given you that you have. Then you have to have some goals. You have to have patience. It takes time. It took us five years to win a track championships. It, it takes time and athletes have to understand that. But it needs each and every one of us to be on the same page, all of us standing as one going in the same direction with a common goal. Certainly I was privileged to be part of many national championships at North Central myself, you know, but it's, it happens as a byproduct of something far greater. And when you come to, to you know, run for fun and personal best, it's, it is certainly a sense of making sure that what you're doing is enjoyable, but also uh, that you're, you're pushing yourself to the very best you possibly can, can be. The, the fun thing that you just sort of figure out is that good things generally tend to, to follow when, when, you, when you buy into that. Uh, it just took me a while, I think, to realize how powerful that was um, over time. The, the story behind the famous uh, John Weigel and, and Matt Brill picture, John Weigel was the upperclassman and Matt Brill was right be below him in class and uh, they're at the Cross Country National Championships. Matt unselfishly is, is you know, cheering his teammate on to, to go and, and push and, and finish the race. Brill is, is, you know, waving his teammate, hey, go get him and, and you got this. And I thought that was a tremendous example of what the North Central program is about, is uh, a teammate looking at, you know, here, this, this upperclassman who's earned it, who's put the work in, pushing his teammate to, to sprint past him and, and um, earn the national title. Uh, and the next year, Matt Brill won the national title in cross country, there was no guarantee that Brill was ever gonna have his moment to win the national title. You can't predict these things. Senior year of college is a big deal in a lot of ways. And the one thing that I really still hadn't accomplished that I really would like to have accomplished is to be all American. It's designated by the NCAA and a coaches association. So if at the cross country national championships, the final meet of the year, uh, if you are in the top 15 uh, you are an NCAA All-America in track. If you're a scorer in the top eight, so if you made it to finals and you score that 10 points or that one point, you are an All-American. And to go into that meet thinking, okay, um, this is it. I mean, there's really not another chance. I mean, you know, when you're a senior in high school, you think, well, I got college, you know, and I wasn't good enough to go pro as a runner. And so, yeah, this is pretty much it. And so this is exactly the situation that in high school, I would have completely folded the tent and it would have been done. And um, you know, to make matters more exciting, I guess. I mean, and, and, and more likely that I would fall down under pressure was the fact that we were doing really well as a team and, and we, we could possibly win. Um, you know, and so um, that was a Friday night. It was a Friday night. It was the first of two days of finals at the time. And as I was doing my strides on the, the, the turn, on the, the south turn of the track, I felt like this weight had completely lifted off of my shoulders. Like, I mean, like, you know, it was it was an epiphany like it was like I mean it was and it, it and the epiphany was I didn't care I, I didn't care if I finished eighth or ninth I mean eighth was last All-American there were 12 in the final I didn't care I, I and it wasn't that I didn't I like I lost my passion for it. it was like the opposite it was like I knew it was like this 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 realization that I had done everything that I possibly could done 
I had lived out the whole idea of run for fun or personal best. I'd done everything. I, I had no regrets. Like at that moment, none. And absent that weight, like I, I, I ran the race of my life. I got uh, eighth by um, uh, like less than a tenth of a second. It was really, really close. It was cool because I sort of had that epiphany that honestly, had I been ninth, it would have been okay. <laughs> like I ran a great race. Had I been ninth, it would have been okay. However, we ended up winning the next day by one point, and um, and that was a big deal too. I mean, obviously, the one I mean, it took 75 points that year to win. Mine was one of those 75 points. My senior year, we were at the NCAA championships. Uh, I, my last meet at North Central, we had just won the national title in the four by one. And the first thing I did is I went and I changed my uniform into the candy stripes because of everything that that meant to me being in that program. There's a difference between being successful and being great. And, and for Al, he wanted everybody to be great. And he would say, G-R-E-A-T, and the whole team would yell, great! Successful, that was a byproduct of being great. And so if, if kids were thinking positive about themselves, yelling great, yelling hip hip, and the whole team yells, hooray! It made you reinforce that behavior that it is a great day and I get to run with other people that are having a fun day. When you truly em embrace the run for fun and personal best concept, you're not hearing from Al Carius, we need to achieve a national title. You never hear that from him. That's not what he's about. It's about him recognizing someone or we as a collective group is not trying to be the best they can be. He knows in his gut and in his heart that if we can achieve that, we can be freed up without inhibition or anxiety or fear, we can go out there and be the best. And by virtue of being the best on that day, the training takes care of itself. The energy from your teammates permeates you as the individual. And you're gonna achieve something extraordinary more often than not. And that's what leads to the national championship. Building winners in life. I mean, that's a model we've used along with run for fun and, and personal best. And, all someone has to do is come to the alumni meet and see the people that come back with their children and it's a, it's a family and the hardest part for us is getting young athletes out of the comparison trap because they're always comparing themselves to another runner, to another athlete in an event, uh, to their high school times. It's forget about all that. Just be the best that you can be and it takes time, it takes patience and you know things will happen. You know, I mean, it's easy to say, you know, just do your best and that's good enough. Uh, it's another thing to do your best to fall short and still have it be good enough. And Al lives that, and, and that's that's where run for fun and personal best it becomes. I mean, you'll, you know, you'll notice it's not run for fun and national championships. It's run for fun and personal best. We did win today. We did win today. You know, that's winning. You guys were fourth last. <laughs> It's about the person and the team that you become in the process of going towards outcome. So it's not about just whether you win or not, it's about you know, uh, what, what happens in between. And I, I like the saying, you can win in losing and lose in, in winning. And I've seen that happen many, many times. And we want our student athletes to go through here to feel like they've absorbed information that's gonna help them you know, through difficulties, through challenges, through uh, work ethic and commitment and everything else, being a part of a team to, to, to really be the very, very best that they can be. North Central had really not finished off the podium you know, very often. I think like two years since Cinesal had been there. And so I walked in the door thinking like, ah, we're just gonna keep winning trophies here. My freshman year, I actually was our second man at nationals, uh, which doesn't happen at North Central. Usually you have you know, older guys that kind of have developed in the program, show the freshmen the way. And you're thinking as a coach, well, we're just 
trying to reload and we keep trying to recruit and we keep trying to develop and then the bottom fell out. My freshman year, we were uh, not on the podium. It was, it was a pretty dark time. You know, Al would always say he thought we were on autopilot. A lot of that, Al takes personal responsibility as the head distance coach, cross country coach, that uh, the culture was slipping, where more guys were just kind of there and not invested, not having the individual goals and not on the path you know, for success. And it isn't about just results, but the results were right there. And so it was a hard time. They had to, they had to examine, uh, uh, is it things that we're doing or things that structurally, is it practices, but really it was more of a culture of people wanting to be part of it, but are you really dedicating everything you can to the philosophy and the success? And, and uh, are you just want to be associated with the programs? Not everyone's gonna be their best on every given day. so. You know, some of you may be elated, some may be disappointed. You know, tomorrow's another day, and next week's another week, and just keep being as positive as you can. All the pieces of the puzzle are in place, perfectly, all right? This is our day, guys, run our race. Let's run with purpose. Let's run with something stronger than willpower. Let's run with heart. And then after the second year of us not making the podium at nationals, it wasn't stress, it was just, um, and it wasn't disappointment in us, it was more disappointment in him, himself. And I think we took that all really hard because you know, we love the guy and we, we certainly didn't want him to think it was him. And so you know, we, we took that um, to heart. And I do remember this too, Al saying, a number of coaches coming up to him and saying, when are you going to retire? Insinuating, you might be past your time. I think the toughest part for me was Al and Grammy questioning themselves, you know, as leaders of this place. That just really hurt. And we also had a very young team and some of the older guys were not, you know, passing those kind of values down to the younger guys. And it took us a while to get out of that, having the younger guys learn what it takes, you know, and be in the process and slowly make those, those changes in lifestyle and in their commitment to the program. And that's what the culture is all about. They had to make some hard decisions about it, getting people to get back to the fundamentals of what made it successful. And that, that change and shift in culture and the challenging of, of young men is like, no, this is our standard. This is the baseline we know works and has worked for years, but we had to go through some hard times to get to that point. The morning run was always just whoever wanted to be there. And after a while, we saw that slipping where, you know, not everybody was there. Not everybody was invested. And that took a hit to that culture. And we decided if we felt as coaches that the morning run was important for their progress, then we should make it a practice and make it mandatory. And Al was really against that. But when we did make it mandatory that there's a morning run and you have to be there, 18 guys quit. The only thing we ever said was when we took 16th as we started saying during our workouts, you know, 16 to 1. We called the guys into a room uh, several times during the year and said, I know that we're doing the right things, we're in the right direction. I believe in you, I want you to believe in yourself. I know to everyone external to us, the outside world, they look and say, hey, the program's failing, we're going the wrong direction, but I know internally we're starting from the inside out and we will eventually be uh, you know, the team that uh, I know we can become. Be the runner you wanna become, be the team you wanna become, be it now, be think like that, think like go. that, you're great. The run for fun and personal best has it's always been an easy thing to embody because you know, when you're running well and you're winning, it's easy to have fun and just go for personal best. When you're not on the podium at nationals and you're struggling a little bit, you really have to dig a little bit deeper than results. And so we had to like come to why we were really doing this. And it was 
because we did love it. You know, we wanted to have fun, we wanted to be the best version of ourselves. Let the culture develop into a place where it's back to um, allowing the personal best because once, if the culture wasn't there, the personal best weren't going to happen. So I think it's reshoring up what do we need to do to get to our personal best? What do we need to do to be successful? I knew that we would run well. I knew we could run well. My only concern was, will these athletes put too much pressure on themselves and over try? There was a lot of pressure on that team and they did everything they needed to do, they willed it, and they knew they were going to win. They ended up second place, they put us back on the podium, and the culture was back. The philosophy, the motto has remained the same, but he realized some things structurally needed to change as the student-athlete athlete dynamic changed. But that's the great thing about it, he can adjust, you can still be successful with a different type of student athlete having the same approach, but tweaking other things within the program. Go Sean, keep it up baby, keep it up Sean. With all of them collected together and all these you know people here you know supporting him, it just it had a synergistic effect that was just a very, very powerful. They are a great team. I told them you know about four years ago we had the talent to be a great team, but we needed to get through the process. We needed to evolve. We needed a lot of life lessons to go through. These guys believed in us, they had faith all along. They had faith in, the, in, in themselves, they had faith in the coaches, they had faith in the system, they had faith in their teammates. In that process, they stuck with because there was a lot of people, I think, that maybe had doubted us you know, a few years ago, but uh, they really uh, you know, had a tremendous experience today and great race, and I just couldn't be prouder of them. We were challenged the first two years in, in a lot of ways as, as young kids, but I think we learned a lot from it. And I think it, it also made us that much better our last two years. You know, by our senior year, we, we had seven All-Americans and had the largest margin of victory at the national meet. And you know, that wouldn't have come without the first two years of struggle and, and reinventing kind of our own individual selves into a team. And so when you think about over the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the O's, the 10s, and now we're in the 20s, you think about the student athlete has changed over the 50 years. The, the environment and the culture of the college has changed over 50 years. Um, society has changed over all that time. The stresses of the student have changed. So, but despite all those changes, he's been able to carry the same ideology of being very highly competitive, but knowing that if he can speak to the heart and the mind, you got something. They found the formula again and then starting in 09, why it was so impactful is that we won seven cross-country titles from that point on. And we won five indoor track. One of them was here in 17. And then two in outdoor. So we won 14 national titles when they reshaped and re-examined and they redirected these programs. for your national champions. There's no way to measure the reach of a guy like Al Karius who's been coaching athletes from college for 60 years. It's a ripple effect. You know, you change one person, that person changes 10, those 10 change 100, those 100 change 1,000. One of Frank Gramamosa's big things was that he 
I remember when I was here as a volunteer coach, he would, like he'd come in and we got another one. And it was meaning that a North Central College athlete who had graduated through the program was now a coach somewhere, high school, college, whatever. But they would count up and keep track of the number of people that they had influenced and that were now coaches. I'm a head girls track and field and cross country coach here at Naperville North. I have been for the last 28 years. I've never been able to find a mission statement that quite captures things as best as well as, as uh, Run for Fun and Personal Best does. Uh, we've tried, but the ones I've come up, I've experimented with over the years are far more verbose. That's kind of what I, uh, that's, that's what sort of a mission for me, um, you know, as a coach is, is to bring that sort of an idea into what we, you know, what we do as a, um, as a program here at North. I started out as an accounting major. <laughs> Then I thought I might want to be a teacher, but when it was all said and done, I said, I can't see myself doing anything other than, than being a college coach. I want to have the same impact on college student athletes that Al and Grammy have had on my life. I'm the head men's and women's track coach at NYU, and I think everything that I do is still rooted in the things that I learned from North Central. So I talk to my team all the time about North Central and the run for fun and, and personal best motto. Um, it's grounded in everything that, that I stand for as a coach. One, two, three, NYU! In our society right now, we are so focused on results and you know performance. When that's not there, it challenges you to do things for the right reasons. And it's made me a, a lot better coach. I think, you know, people that have this golden path to success really struggle to show other people how to be successful because they haven't had struggle. And in my time at North Central, I was able to learn the good, the bad, and the ugly of, you know, building a program and keeping a program going. And I've used all that here every day, you know, in, in, in my own life. So I've been very fortunate to have some uh, former student athletes that are now teaching and coaching uh, in high school and it's fun to talk with them about how, how did they start their program going, how did they, was there a culture that they needed to change. Run for fun and personal best is the cornerstone of all the messages that I give to my student athletes. It's, it's the cornerstone of the culture that I want to create here where where students are on a daily basis investing in being the best version of themselves and, and trying to be better than they were the day before and enjoying the process. We call the Al Carius Coaching Tree because every branch on that tree is growing and, and having an impact on other people's lives. <laughs>